Hello, everybody. This is Mark Torgel of the original Toxic Avengers saying, I survived the podcast with Neil on Without Your Head. And I still have most of my head. And we've got John Gulliger, who's a director of Feast and Feast 2, Sloppy Seconds. Welcome to Without Your Head. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> and if you're listening live, pay no attention to the previous introduction. Pay no attention. Because that'll be edited out of the archive. Just right from the top. Right. But now that I brought it up, everyone will know we missed it. This is the first time we've ever spoken to John. Exactly. Who are you guys? Oh, sorry. That's well, all. Right. We get that every time. But yeah, it, let everybody know you can get out on DVD right now is Feast 2 Sloppy Seconds. Yeah. The, the unrated version. Is there a rated I, version, too? Well, yeah, there's, there's, there is, you know, so it could go in places like Walmart and Blockbuster and things like that. But there's also an unrated version. I, I would just stick with that one. Mm-hmm. But but you know the, the R rated is fine, but uh, you know R rated yeah finer exactly. Yeah. The, you know there are some out there though, not 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 a uh, feast too, but that put unrated on, on the on the DVD, and that is the only version. Yeah, they try, they try to fool you. Well, no, well it's oh, unrated, yeah. right? <laughs> I guess so. You know, I mean, you know, because it actually costs money to to get your 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 show rated. So I guess uh, if you save that that money and and I think the thing too is that they crack down on, um, you know, people putting out rated and unrated, but it's the same disc. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you run across any of that kind of stuff, but um, uh, you know, I have friends that have done that. And uh, but um, but yeah, they've. I think there's a there was some kind of uh, you know situation, so you can't do that anymore. Right. Well, what is like the difference between the uh, the R rated and and the unrated? I don't want to tell. <laughs> but I, I would say you're you're pretty safe with either one. All right. You know, it's like as far as, as, to tell you the truth, as far as far as the the, the good stuff, you know, it, yeah. it's pretty. It's we got away with a lot of good stuff, I think, mm-hmm. and uh, you're probably pretty safe. Although, I would say too, if you if I if you could run across either one of them, it'd be better to run across the unrated one. Right. You might get like some extra like monster penis or something. Possible. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. What did you, what did you watch? Oh, no, <laughs> oh, oh I got the wrong movie here. <laughs> did, did you keep any of the props from the movie? Speaking of, uh, oh yeah. In fact, uh, um, the other day we we're having to get props, you know, for the um, for some little pickups here for Feast Three, and and uh, we had we're walking around with the uh, not the monster penis, but the wrestling penis. Uh, uh, which horrified um, the editor. He's like, "You gotta go wash your hands. What are you doing?" <laughs> but um, anyway, editors are a little uh, germaphobic. Right. But uh, but yeah, yeah. If people don't know what we're talking about here. Is uh, if you rent the movie, there's actually a luchador in the movie. Yeah, and uh, and and he had he's rather lar- largely endowed. Yeah, and. Uh, but um, I'm not really sure, you know, what 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 the well, I, I probably shouldn't even talk about it. But what the real thing is, uh, um, but uh, but I had to say that 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 Juan, who who played um, Lightning in the movie, uh, only speaks Spanish, and uh, and it was his very first day when we shot his introduction to the movie, which I don't know if you remember or if you've seen it, yeah. uh, involves. A, a, a love scene of sorts, and there was actually a little bit more to it than what we used, and uh, and we had a translator, and it was just to, to you know he didn't really know us really, and uh, I think it was you know it was a pretty wild day, and it was Halloween, uh, like a year ago, right. uh, on Halloween uh, was our very first day of shooting Feast Two, and uh, but it was it was pretty wild with the uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody naked and uh, with the prosthetic and uh, trying to explain what to do. Yeah, it's pretty wild. I don't know if you're not. I guess you're not. I don't know if you're supposed to talk about this or not. But was there any problems getting him to uh, do any scenes without the mask? Um. Well, that's why. That's why we officially can't say who he is. Right. Okay. So and um, because you know you're not supposed to you know take off the mask and uh, but he's playing a character. And he's actually an excellent actor, by the way. So if there's anyone out there that's looking for an actor, I don't care if it's a, a, a English film or, or a Spanish film, this, this guy is, is really good. His name is uh, 
uh, Juan uh, Garcia, uh, Juan Gar- Longoria Garcia, and and uh, and he, I don't know, I think he's really good, but um, maybe that's just me. Um, how long, like after the the first feast, did you uh, decide to make a sequel? Were you just like, were you always like planning on making a sequel? No, I don't think anyone thought there would be a sequel to feast, uh-huh. especially when we were making it. Um, I mean, in the back of your mind, you kind of think that, and yeah. you know, uh, 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 Marcus and Patrick, you know, certainly thought it in the back of their minds, but you know, you don't want to jinx that kind of thing. And and the other thing is that, uh, you know, it was part of the Project Greenlight thing, and we were getting a lot of a lot of flack from people um, when we were making it. Um, you know, what idiots we were, and you know, what what bad writers they were, what a stupid director I am, and. That kind of stuff, because uh, it was part of that contest. Um, but when it came out, uh, it didn't get a big release, and, uh, but it found an audience on DVD mm-hmm. and uh, it made somebody some money. Uh, or else, yeah, we wouldn't be talking about the Feast 2 or Feast 3. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, just one night, um, uh, someone just said, uh, hey, uh, you want to make Feast 2 and 3? And I was like, uh, and Diane went, yeah. Uh, she's like, yeah. Okay. And so, here we are. Are you proud that, like, it found an audience outside of, like, uh, the Project Greenlight? Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, and, 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 and I've heard some wild things now uh, since all that happened. Um, you know, people having cake parties and <laughs> projecting it on the wall and, you know, feast parties. And since it <laughs> takes place in a, you know, beer bar, but mm-hmm. um, the first one, um, so I'm not quite sure what they're going to do with the second one. But uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, we're all pretty thrilled. Yeah, you know? I mean, because that's the best thing. You know, that people actually watch it. Because mm-hmm. um, when I saw the movie, I actually I had never watched Project Greenlight, okay. and I didn't even know that this movie had anything to do with it until uh, quite a long time after I saw the movie. Yeah, and I was a big fan well, of Feast. Well, that's probably the best the best way. Um, and and then all those people that that actually watch Project Greenlight. You know, I don't know if they watched the movie or not, but they should have because it's, you know, it'd be like nine, you know, weeks of build up to a, you know, a joke without watching the, uh, <laughs> right. you know, the the payoff, you know, the, the punchline <laughs> or something. Yep. And, uh, you know, I see, I love that kind of stuff. You know, if I know somebody, I love to see their movie, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, so I figure that there would be people that, you know, feel they know us and would have to see the movie. I mean, I would. Mm-hmm. But, I was. Uh, I was kind of reverse. I was thinking about going back and watching Project Greenlight. Oh, no, yeah, I don't. could do the same thing. <laughs> now, now I would say don't do that because <laughs> you're giving me sweats. Little <laughs> 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 cold sweats, my forehead. <laughs> what, was it hard to uh, direct your uh, grandfather in a movie? Oh, that's my dad. Oh, your dad? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's my dad. Um, is the uh, it's the bartender. His name is Clue, mm-hmm. and uh, it's my brother that played Greg Swank. Yeah. And his son, Clue Moshe, played the baby. Yes. And um and so there was like, you know, the, the three generation thing and that was kinda of fun and, and yeah, I don't direct him much, you know. Right. <laughs> you know. Uh in fact, uh, we always joke about when he when he walks into the room he starts directing everybody. <laughs> uh so uh you know, and then so so you had to just find a way to um if you need something done specifically um, you know, you just you find a way to say it. You know, just just maybe a little more diplomatic. Um, I don't know, or maybe less diplomatic. Because I know with Diane and I, we just fight the whole time. Uh, so you know, you have your <laughs> the way you you deal with people who are you know friends or relatives or who are close to you um, may not be the same as you would you would work with somebody that you know, came onto the show that you you know or that you've seen before, maybe you've never seen before, um, um, that's hired for a part. You know, you'd probably be much more diplomatic right. with them than you are with your 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 cronies. Yeah, I would never work with with a relative of mine. Yeah. No, that, that doesn't work at all. No. Troy here's my brother, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, the, see the trouble you're in now? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Wait till we're done with this, man. <laughs> now, you mentioned the baby scene. I guess that's probably like the uh, the best baby scene in a horror movie, like since Dead Alive. Oh, um, good. <laughs> would you agree with that? <laughs> well, he, he, you said it. I, I, I'm not, I can't. Say <laughs> you know, if I say stuff like that, it would just sound, you know, 
funny. Right. But, uh, but yeah, hey, thanks. Mm-hmm. What well, was there anything like uh, when you're writing or directing it, you're just thinking like, this shouldn't be in the movie? Oh, no. In fact, there's probably more stuff that should have been in the movie. But, um, you know, you know, it's not a, you know, we, we, there's a limited amount of funds and time uh, for certain types of movies like, like ours. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and then also, you know, that not everybody's always on the same page. Um, for instance, <laughs> see, you know, like the biker chicks, I was right. going to have them completely naked. <laughs> and, uh, and that'd be kind of like, you know, my sort of joke on, you know, a lot of the horror films and stuff that, that have the, the boobies. Mm-hmm. And, um, so I was going to go the whole thing. Oh my gosh, firestorm. Uh, you wouldn't believe all the, <laughs> everything, you know, on all the, uh, dissension on the set, you know, right. uh, not just from that the actors, possibility. Really? and not from, not from the actors and not from anyone like that, just from people that were, you know, worried about, you know, what type of movie are we making? That kind of thing. It, you know, it all turned out okay in the end, but, um, but you know, just, just things like that. But if you look at Return of the Living Dead, uh, they went ahead. They did that back in you know eighty eighty six or something, right. you know, and that that worked out pretty swell for them. Mm-hmm. Now, um, did you film all of Feast Three while you were doing Feast Two, or parts of it, or how did that work? Well, we filmed we filmed it all mostly, but now we're we're patching a few holes in the boat, so to speak. But that's what we do every time we we shoot a film. You know, you shoot uh, maybe you know maybe someday you know I won't have to do this, but. But, you know, you shoot your film and you edit. And when you're editing, you, you find all kinds of situations where you might need to, you know, get a shot of someone turning around or or you didn't shoot the, the hand coming through the chest or something like that. And you just have to, to do those later. Um, and so now is later for Feast 3, and we're, we're shooting the little pickups now mm-hmm. for, for that. You know, like uh, um, I, I did a little underwater shot today. Um, where I just kind of weighted myself down and, <laughs> and shot it in a friend swimming pool, right. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you mentioned this uh, before we went on air here, but you're saying you know, there are some people who really liked Feast 1 who aren't uh, fans of Feast 2. Yeah. But overall, have you been happy with like um, the feedback you've gotten for the film? Oh, yeah. Well, see I, lo- see, I love Feast 2. I love Feast 1. I love Feast 2. And um, so Feast 2 is a a little bit of a different film. It's a more pop film, you know. It's kind of like more hard days night, you know, running around yeah. <laughs> and uh, with monsters. And uh, um, so I, I, I think a lot of people maybe were just expecting Feast One over again, mm-hmm. and you know that's no fun for us. And eventually, it would be no fun <laughs> watching it, uh, even though you know I guess no one will know. Um, but I think just like Feast One, as we call it now. Um, Found an audience. I think Feast Two will also, and uh, and certainly, um, you know, if you like the outrageous stuff, uh, like me, uh, there's lots in there, yeah. and um, there's a lot of you know profane stuff. Right. Uh, I feel, and uh, you know, for me, that's not bad though. That's you know another tool in your arsenal mm-hmm. of drama and comedy. And uh, and that's what our movie is about, you know, <laughs> profanity, oh. and uh, um, you know, and, and you know, it's dimension, you know, uh, extreme. It's not dimension classics, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that's 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 what we did. But yeah, there's there's yeah, definitely more stuff uh, that you know was probably you know supposed to be in there, but we just couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we just lost uh, some of our uh, people here that we. Well, that's all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, when you say about the the biker chick gang and you, whose idea was just to even include them in, in the first place? Oh uh, well, you know, uh, you, you know, Diane uh, played Harley Mama in the first one, and she got blown up, and uh, so you know we're like, well, how are we gonna have her come back? So Mark is like, well, well she's her twin sister with a all girl biker gang. So yeah, that's where that came from. <laughs> well, um, was that a was that a problem with anybody like um, including some of the characters that you kind of thought were killed off in the first movie? Um, <laughs> well, 
one's my wife, one's my dad. So, right. so that's, that's why they go, you know, one one births me and one stuff <laughs> with me. I'm not gonna tell you which one. Oh, and uh, and uh, so Listen. they got back in, uh, and you know the way I look at it, uh, in the long run, it probably doesn't matter. Um, and as far as the, uh, you know, I think you assumed when you first you know heard about it that certain people would, it would it would be about those people, uh, these two, but you know sometimes that doesn't always work out. You know everybody is working on other things. Or more money, and right. and you know, star starring in movies that are you know way bigger, and you know, basically you go down the list. But I don't, I'm not going to because I don't have to. You guys know who's starring and coming out and things, and you know, on TV shows and stuff. And and you can't force people to be in your movie, and so you you, you just make you know the movie you can. And mm-hmm. this is what we made in Feast Two. Yeah. And probably you know it would if everybody else had come back. It would, probably would have been more tasteful. <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe it worked out for the best. Who knows? And maybe you know, maybe Feast Three. Who knows? Uh, and uh, but there were people that came back. You know, Honey Pie came back. Yeah, and, that's uh, actually one of my favorite scenes of the first movie. Was yeah. I, when I was telling John about Feast because I told him like you gotta watch this movie. I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm not just saying that because you're on here. And I was like, this one scene I really like. And he he thought I meant was like uh, when one of the monsters is like uh, like uh, like ejaculating on somebody or something. Uh-huh. I was like, no, no, not that. I, I like the scene when the uh, the girl just runs out and gets in the car and she just takes off. I was like, yeah. that's what that's what someone should do in a movie. That is yeah. a classic scene. No, I, really I, love, I love that scene too. But but her her um, you know her agents and everyone man, they did not want her to come back and be in this because uh, you know um, but we're friends <laughs> so she wanted to. But I had to tell you that, uh, you know, she had to go through a little bit of pain just to come back and be in the film. Forget about the pain she experienced <laughs> in the film. Right. Uh, but even behind the scenes, uh, it was uh, it was painful for her, and it was, that's kind of a bummer, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, that's that's those are the films we make, and uh, not everybody likes them. Uh, but luckily, she did. Uh, uh, we have a cameo by another person that died in Feast One. And, uh, you know, he he wanted to come back and do something, and he's like, uh, I'm like, well, geez, Judah, you're dead, you know. <laughs> and uh, and and uh, he goes, well, I go, well, what about what about a dream sequence? <laughs> so so there we, we Yeah, that, it's you know. an excellent scene, by the way. I like that, too. It's like yeah. one of my favorite parts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when he's just kind of floating up. And it's so beautiful. It everything. is. The former but, guest um, of ours, too, Judah Friedlander. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool guy. Yeah, yeah. I like Judah. He was great. And it's so funny because when we shot it, he's like, "Oh, because we shot it pretty quick." And he's like, "You know, uh, tomorrow I I gotta go back. I gotta light the Christmas tree in Rockefeller Center." <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. From feast two to lighting the Christmas tree in Rockefeller Center. Excellent. Now, is it like was it harder or is it easier to do like a a monster movie that takes place mostly in like daylight? Oh, uh, suppose. Well, uh, you know, I wish I'd had a little bit more money, but mm-hmm. you know, we don't hide from the fact that we're a man in a rubber suit movie. And um, you know, I know some people kind of, you know, will compare it to uh, Toxic Avenger and stuff like that. I don't see. I don't. I don't actually go there, but you know, um, we are a man in a rubber shirt, suit movie. And mm-hmm. you know, I grew up with my my favorite movie when I was growing up was Creature for the Black Lagoon. And that's definitely a man in a rubber suit movie. Yeah. But he's yeah. swimming in the daytime, so there you go. And uh so so that was good for me. And uh and we try to have fun with it and you know, some things you you goof about and sometimes you don't. And uh you know, I know that some people um are kinda upset over it, but then again, um some of my favorite scenes, uh like the baby scene and stuff take place in broad daylight yeah. with the monsters running around and there's no way to get around that or it wouldn't have been you know in my eyes as good you know because I didn't want to hide anything there I wanted to be <laughs> really <laughs> in your face exactly yeah I'll, I'll take the rubber suit though over the CGI anytime yeah yeah uh, cheap plug for us, uh, Ben Chapman, who played the creature from Black Lagoon, uh, is a former guest of ours, too. You listen to that. Really? Yeah, the late, great Ben Chapman. Yeah, one of the nicest guys I'll ever talk to. 
That's yeah, boy, true. I had all my models and all my little plastic figures and, all me and too. everything. Did you have you the Mego toy? Did you have the Mego action figure? Um, I don't know. And then I had the, was it Ravel? Who, who made the? Oh, that was the model. Aurora. Aurora? Or yeah, yep. That was the you model. You know, made all the, 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 the famous rawhide monsters, model. The, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the uh, Universal Monsters and stuff. Had all those, of course. And, uh, but I was never so good at painting them as my friends, you know. Or, <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever wanted to explain, or has anyone like tried to get you to explain where the monsters come from? The movie, or do you well, think kind of like the? Uh... I think we tried to explain it. We did an autopsy. And that was going to exactly. I was going to explain it, but uh, it, just it didn't to work me. out. Because, because you know, like in all these movies, they always, um, you know, something happens, and and you know at the beginning of the movie and they will uh, you know be something even not of this earth and they will by the time the movie's over like 12 hours later they will not only have autopsied the monster they would have figured out how to feed it made the serum <laughs> distributed it all around the world and you know who knows what and uh, ended up victorious and so anyway so we took the first step and had the autopsy and oh. that's about as far as we got this is a fantastic scene you almost get like a uh, it's almost like a Bukaki scene at one point during the, well, in the I, don't think it, I don't even think it's almost like one. <laughs> All right. Now, What's a Bukaki? Now, as if as if I didn't want to see this movie as it was, now I definitely have to. <laughs> I'll let you buy it. Well, you gotta buy All your right. own. You can't be buying mine. All right. I don't even know what a Bukaki is. I don't know. Is that yeah. a, like a burger or something? I think so. There's there's a giant eyeball. I don't yeah. I don't even know why that would be there, but it works. Well there you go. <laughs> yeah, you never know it if they didn't have the autopsy, right? So, uh, you mentioned about a uh, uh, honey pie and the scene with the bartender. I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but uh, on the commentary, you say that like they actually wanted to take that even further. Was it like any specific like ideas they had? Well, I just remember, you know, I, I, I would go out to eat with these guys, and we we'd go eat this this uh, noodle soup called pho, and some different things like that here in Los Angeles, and. Uh, or we went to this Korean barbecue when I remember, and and she and my dad are talking, and and, and I actually heard her mention this recently in an interview, or else I probably wouldn't say it, but she's like going, yeah, and Clue, you know, his whole thing is like, yeah, I'm gonna punch you in the vagina. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't really know what that would even have done, but um, uh, but I think they had this idea that they would even make it, um. Not raunchier, but just more vicious. Right. Now, now, you know, it is a comedy of sorts. You know, we sometimes we flip around a bit, but you, you know, when he's beating her up, <laughs> and it just goes on and on, it's pretty. To me, it's pretty funny. Yeah. And uh, it with goes the sound, so over the top with right? the sound and everything like this. I mean, I mean, it's just you know, if you shot it in a dramatic film. uh you know, I'm thinking of American History X. When <laughs> the curb stomp. Say, the curb stomp. You know, maybe it wasn't so funny, at least to me. Uh, I'm sure there's people laughing. out there that, that roll over, you know, uh, double gut, you know, laughing. Uh, but, you know, uh, but it's kind of the same thing in a way. Um, we sort of have a thing like that, I guess. But but our version is it's like you stomp and stomp and stomp. And stomp. It becomes kind of funny to me. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I don't know what you thought, but um, but yeah, I don't want really to give it totally away, but too late. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's our version. Of, that's our brand of comedy. Mm-hmm. I think I don't know if it was Adam Green. It was I guess we had on once, and they said that like actually when they um, when they made him cut like some of the uh, the gore out of the movie, it actually made it even like worse. Oh, and I yeah. think kind of, like if you would cut that scene down, it'd actually make it just a regular fight. Like, <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. Like he's really beating up this defenseless woman. Yeah. No. I. What they do is that they'll make you. Uh, um, and I know. I, I know Adam and Joe Lynch and, and all those guys. They're really great. Um, um, the. Um, yeah. They'll make you shorten it. And the. And 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 it is the over the top part that makes it funny. Like like too much blood or too much beating or you know something that just goes on and on and on clonk clonk clonk. Right. Uh, yeah, they'll 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 say yeah, it's too much. Make it shorter. Make it shorter, and then they'll actually, um, uh, you know, become serious. 
Yeah. Uh, I will say, though, that I have noticed, because ours is an out-and-out comedy, they actually give us a little more leeway, I think. And I know that this will disturb a lot of my friends who who have huge, huge battles with the MPAA. Um, uh, but because we are a comedy, um, mm-hmm. well, they didn't really hassle us as much as, as we thought they would. Yeah. You know, and I don't want to get any... any that, like specifics necessarily, but I would just say, um, I think when you do a comedy, it, they give you more leeway than if we were doing a serious movie, they'd really get down on us. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of funny. It's like backwards from what I would think in a way. <laughs> right. Plus, you yeah. think uh, this I think, of I think things should be really bad. You know, like when you if you made a movie, like like say American History X and something, you know, when you make a movie that's that's about something serious. And there's a serious crime, and, and it's violent. I think I think the audience should really feel it. I think I think they should get queasy. I think that uh, that you know their anus should pucker up. Whatever whatever happens when you <laughs> when you experience something that just is a little shocking, and right. uh, I think it should be bad. You know, and that's, that's anyway. Mm-hmm. Next film. <laughs> Was there any like uh, scenes in in Feast Two that? Uh, or something that you like, you wanted to put in in the first feast film, but you couldn't for whatever reason. Oh, probably. Um, you know, there's always stuff like that. You know, and Marcus and Patrick, also the writers, um, will always bring back something that we couldn't do. You know, just right off the bat, I can't really think of of anything. And I know that they would, you know, take this that question and run. But um, but at at the well, the nudity, yeah. Uh, but at the moment, um, I can't really think of uh, of, of anything. Yeah. You know, when we hang up, I will. <laughs> then you can call us. Okay. Right. That's how that works. And we'll edit it into the show. Yeah. <laughs> call you back. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, why did you decide to like change like the intros for the characters? Oh, well, they're, they're just different, and they'll be different on the next one also. This um, was the same. That was always the kind of the plan. Um, that the first, well, the first intros when we just had the cards, we kind of wanted to have them a little more animated than they actually ended up being. But we just didn't have the uh, 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 wherewithal to pull it off. And so then the second time, then we thought we would have the video stuff, and then the next time we have kind of a combination of the cards and the video stuff. Mm-hmm. So there you go. No. Nope. Um, there's a scene in the movie where I guess uh, the there's a monster and he's like uh, raping a cat, and then there's oh, like a, really? a cat. Yeah, I'm telling you about your own movie. In case you haven't seen, it. and then there's like I guess there's like a cat offspring. It could be making love. Oh, that, that's but, exactly right. Is yeah, there any chance a, that there's a like, cat, yeah, a cat well, I was wondering if there's any chance that a uh, you know a human could be uh, could have a, a monster offspring. I I, I bet so. I don't Can know. Possibly see that in the third film. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Oh man, we don't want to give any uh, spoilers away. But 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 uh, but I, I will tell you this: that um, when the uh, the little cat hybrid beast is attacking Honey Pie, right. that's that's Martin Kleba in that outfit, um, who played Thunder. Yeah. For, yeah. That, that's pretty that, awesome. I thought that's pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs> Did he get paid twice? Playing two, two separate yeah, roles. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you know, because he actually is a stuntman, also, and um, so yeah, so he was the uh, he was Thunder, but also the cat hybrid beast. <laughs> any chance uh, we'll ever see like any uh, action figures? <laughs> <laughs> Anatomically correct. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know. I, give I, don't, I don't see it on the foreseeable, on you know, in the foreseeable future. But I have to tell you that lots of things happen that you don't foresee. Right. So, um, um, so you never know, right? Yeah, you can like collect the proof of purchases and get like the bag of grandma mail away figure. Oh, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? That like, so. like, oh yeah, you know, if we were a bigger movie, yeah, they could sell little, little tiny bags. Like, remember when you get the bag of gold or something? You know, the chewing gum and stuff uh-huh. like that. Oh or, yeah. Yeah. And uh, only it would be like some slime that you'd like squeeze into your mouth. You know, <laughs> Do they make awesome. slime anymore? Do you remember they used to sell the slime? Yeah, I, I don't know. 
I don't. I, I doubt it. The trash can. That was that was great stuff. Yeah, you can get with little eyeballs in it. Yeah. Well, that's a fun toy. <laughs> um, I remember you mentioned like in the commentary that like uh, this like the city you filmed it in or the town you filmed it in. Uh-huh. I guess they uh, they weren't happy with this, some of some well, of the scenes. Well, I mean, I, well, in general, they were they're pretty behind us. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, there's always some people that you know. Well, I mean, just you know the movie um, mm-hmm. that just wouldn't be so pleased about some of the things in the movie. There's, there's, you know, it's this little teeny town, and there's literally like 32 churches surrounding it, and um, and so on Saturday it's empty, and on Sunday it's empty because everybody's in church. But during the weekday, there's people there. And we have these monsters, and they do have their junk hanging out um, <laughs> when it doesn't fall off. Uh, and then they're female. Mm. Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, not everybody was into it. But, you know, after the first movie, uh, when we, we got the one caught in the door, I felt everybody was just going to be looking for it. And uh, so I said, well, we might as well just have the monster junk there because, you know, so... Mm-hmm. But yeah, not everybody was keen on that. Did, did the because you? I believe you also say that like um, they eventually uh, saw the first movie, and I guess maybe some weren't uh, too thrilled with it. Had, yeah. had they seen? Well, they had it in they had it in the little local uh, um, uh, video store, oh, yeah. but you know it didn't really make as uh, yeah you know, it wasn't as big of a deal. But when we were going to go there, um, uh, one of the townspeople actually rented it. <laughs> For, and left it out for free for everybody to um, to watch. Right. Which you know, I mean, if you're if you're making a sequel to the Notebook or something, I guess you know that would be pretty cool. <laughs> right. um, you know that 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 no, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, but because it's a sequel to a horror film, uh, and then you know many people there would try to just you know no matter what it was, probably be against you know right. us. Um, not everybody was for it, but a lot of people were. A lot of people were cool, and and uh, you know, it's certainly something that that you know a lot of folks will remember for a long time. I think. Do you know if they got to see the uh, this one? Oh well, it's everywhere now. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know if they, they had a big get together. Like, oh, let's go see the movie that was made. Or, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I bet it's, well, who knows? You know, you, you just don't know how how people are going to take it. You know, whether they're going to. Be like, hey, all right, or ban it, you know. <laughs> but uh, but no, we went, we went, you know. I mean, just the way you do anywhere, we went and talked to the city council and everything like that to get permission to, to film there. Mm-hmm. Um, so so yeah, so a lot of a lot, you know, so yeah, so more people were with us than against us, I'd say. Yeah. Or, or you probably wouldn't have been able to uh, to to film there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh- I know it was a great, uh, great barbecue, by the way. Uh, what was that? From there was great barbecue. Oh, from, I'd be little, there. Like a from like a little gas station. Uh, that was just you know. We're all about the barbecue here. Oh yeah. yeah. Like whoa. <laughs> anyway. um, you mentioned uh, in the commentary. There's mentioned that someone actually uh, threw up during the movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was there anything uh, that you like during while you're filming it? Like actually made you feel kind of ill. Me? No, nothing makes me <laughs> feel. Oh, wait, like, what? Something happened the other day. I actually was doing something or watching something, but uh, I can't really think what it is now. But uh, but yeah, no, making the movie and all that. No, nothing. It's because you know it's you know for us it's all it's all fake. You know it's methylcellulose and you know pumps through a pump with color and you know. Um, you know, I mean, the grosser it is, or the more real it looks, or silly, whatever. Um, you know, the, the the bigger you, th- the bigger thrill you get. You know, when you're doing it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no, nothing, uh, nothing, nothing made me sick. <laughs> but there were people with queasy stomachs, um, and uh, yeah, um, during the, uh, the the grandma barf scene, um, someone was watching it uh, at the little monitor and just went. <laughs> Is that does that do you take that as like a compliment? I've done, I've done my so well. How can you not? <laughs> I'd put it on the uh, I'd put it on like the DVD. 
<laughs> no, not, not the film. I mean, you know, like right under two thumbs yeah. up. <laughs> made me puke. We got, <laughs> in the chat room, I think we get, we've got a customer here. He said, uh, after he said, monsters with their junk out, sounds like a must-see film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I gotta tell you though, um, with creatures with their junk hanging out, when, when we went to see, at the Bosch Museum of Science, they had uh, when the Lord of the Rings came out, uh-huh. they had like all the the film props and everything there, and they have like life size like replicas of certain things, and one was a troll, and you're standing there next to like a ten foot troll. <laughs> and he's got all his stuff hanging out. Yeah. So I like, know. You, you no know, one's about that, right? It with it. Yeah. It's like, hey, it's me. The troll's <laughs> beanbag right here. Cool, man. Well, there you go. <laughs> no one's going to call him a troll anymore. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I talked to Peter Jackson about this one. Yeah. Apparently, well, I mean, you, go on, you know, Peter Jackson has is, is already been, been through this territory. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's true, true. Um, Dead Alive is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I, I don't, I'll mow the line now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, what's the character? What was his name? Uh, the guy plays that got the lawnmower. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Well, oh, I was yeah. just trying to plug it because we also yeah, had another shameless plug. Oh, <laughs> I can't remember his name offhand. That's horrible. But uh, I I guess it wasn't you, but someone in the commentary uh, miscalls calls the uh, the wrestling move. Oh, okay. All right. Just to, just to uh, clear that up, it's actually the camel clutch. But they did get the iron sheet correct. The, the camel toe? What? <laughs> the camel clutch. Oh, oh, oh. The cobra clutch, uh, that's actually Sergeant Slaughter's move. Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to offend a lot of uh, like pro wrestling fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was the Mexican version of it. The, <laughs> yeah. So they, they they call it something different down there. Yeah. I understand. Dun, 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 dun. And you gotta let everybody know too. You gotta. St- I don't want to spoil the whole movie, but you gotta stay for the credits. And I do think that was really well done. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how can you not stay for the little floaty ants? Anyways, uh, but um. <laughs> well, did, I don't give it anything away, but actually, when I was watching it, and and I thought I missed the ending because it kind of ends abruptly, and so I was rewinding it, and I didn't even notice until I started rewinding it that the uh, the blood was like coming out of the woman's mouth or the side of yeah. the. Yeah. But then well, he quotes well, on the rewind because it was actually flowing up. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. Um, well, I always thought that everybody would just you know when the Indian came, you know, I'd be like, what, you know, <laughs> and then and then we're watching like all these movies like uh, what was it, um, um, uh, No Country for Old Men, and uh, it's like it's like for a while all these movies came out with like wacky endings too, and uh, I'm like, well, okay. Well, Maybe it won't be. Some, maybe people won't think it's serious. But I guess I guess people it, it upsets people a lot, and and a lot of people think it's um, you know like we're forced to do that or something. But to me, no. <laughs> I just wanted to you know do that. I don't want to give it all away, but uh, but yeah, uh, I just wanted it to end that way and kind of abruptly. And you know, I like when things just start and stop, and for they don't have that complete literary rhyme and reason for doing it mm-hmm. you know like like oh yeah I'm, I'm watching a movie everything's gonna tie up nice and neat and uh, you know I think I think maybe sometimes in, in the, the, the the horror genre they get a little too obsessed also with tying things up and having a you know a resolution um, and yeah I'm never quite into that right yeah, I'm down with that. It's kind of like you don't always need to know like why why the killer is the killer. He can just be an evil killer. Yeah. You don't know have have what happened to him. And besides, every time they every time they they kill the killer, you know, and if it makes money, that killer's going to come back anyway. So <laughs> that's true. And yeah, we don't have to know he was like an abused child. He's just yeah. a killer. That's yeah. all we need to know. Uh, Astro, do you have a question? Um, what are some of the uh, Favorite directors of yours that have influenced you to make feast? Oh, well, there's you know, it's like one of those questions. Like, what is your favorite film? Uh, there's just probably so so many, but um, but of course, you know, see, I, I dig all these like old European guys, you know, like Cocteau and Fellini and Bergman and all that, and then the Americans, of course, you know, I, I like 
you know, Kubrick and Scorsese and Coppola. I'm, I'm like from that 70s kind of, kind of thing. And then, you know, of course, like John Carpenter and like the thing. Okay. People mm-hmm. always are asking me about remakes and stuff. Yeah. I, I think the thing is like one of my favorite movies of all time. And it's oh, a yeah. remake. So it's like way better than the, uh, than the original. Cape Fear. <laughs> Don't know about that one. <laughs> oh, uh, John, we lost on here, but he's he's actually he always argues with me about that. I actually about prefer the remake, and he he says the original is a much better film. Well, you know, but yeah, I love Taxi Driver, I love Raging Bull, but Cape Fear. Okay, so this is the deal about Cape Fear, um, and I love see, I love the Mitchum, you know, and yeah. the original one there, and that one, and uh, you know that alligator deal. Okay, so but Cape Fear, they do the the was it the thumb in Juliet Lewis's mouth, right? Right. Well, I mean, don't you just assume that at the end of the movie she's going to bite something else off <laughs> for the for the big climax, so to speak? Right. I mean, wouldn't that have been awesome, you know, tying mm-hmm. that into... Oh, well, never mind. Right. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> well, if if you get to uh, film the, the sequel to the remake... Yes. <laughs> Then we know where that's going. Then, exactly. but we, but anyway, we indeed kind of side that we we love all Scorsese, so oh yeah, that's okay. Oh yeah, that's not really going on a limb though. Like <laughs> I like Martin Scorsese. Yeah, it's like really. Yeah, like that's him. true. That's like wow. That's very odd. Uh. <laughs> like Oops. that Hitchcock wasn't bad either. Was <laughs> yeah, all right. Although I I just watched Marnie, and it's pretty goofy. <laughs> <laughs> so watch that on the Netflix, and uh, you know the red, <laughs> but uh, well, maybe not. That's kind of like with Mitchum. Like Night of the Hunter isn't one of my oh. favorite movies. Yeah, well, Lawton, Lawton, um Charles Lawton, uh, it was like I guess it's the only movie he directed. But uh, oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. But uh, but Night of the Hunter is pretty great. And uh, but Latin, okay. So that's another movie I really liked a lot. Uh, it was um, Hunchback from Notre Dame. You know the the one oh, yeah. that he did, and uh, and you know uh, I love the Lon Chaney, but but I really like the Latin version. Um, but he would have evidently the um, the the makeup man. It's one of the Westmores, and uh, and you know, you know uh, uh, Latin was gay, and uh, and maybe the. Uh, the, the the makeup man you know wasn't down with that and Lawton would have him like twist his foot when he was acting so he'd be in like supreme pain and uh. and, and, and the makeup man um, 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 kind of would like kind of putting him in pain because uh, he, he you know maybe I don't know this is these are stories I heard I don't know if it's true or not wow but um, but yeah I love those stories though you know because uh, I love uh, yeah Lawton as that character. Oh yeah, he, he that's that's one of my favorite roles with him too. He he was also my favorite um, Doctor Moreau. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and Island of Lost Souls. Yeah, and Bella. Yeah, Bella's great in that one too. Yeah. Oh, Although, yeah. I I just found out something about well, the well, well, and of course that. I grew up with Devo, you know. So like you know, are we not right. in and all that stuff? <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> I always Weird wanted to be the lawgiver. I think that would be like the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I found out something about the the hunchback. I didn't know. I didn't know that Orson Welles was actually going to be uh, quasi. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, and but he wanted to direct it, and yeah, they didn't want him to do it. And so then he went on and did uh, Citizen Kane. So I think he did all right. Yeah. Although no one liked that when it came out. I guess. Yeah, that's from true. What I, well, maybe that's not true. It might have just been bad PR, but mm-hmm. uh, you know. But, um, but yeah, I thought that awesome. was pretty interesting, though. Yeah. Well, there's a line for you though for uh, any fans of Feast who don't like doesn't like Feast Two Sloppy Seconds. You can say, <laughs> well, nobody likes Citizen Kane when it was up. <laughs> yeah. It didn't make much money, you know. Well, yeah, Feast One didn't get you know actually good reviews, but now there's there's quite a few people that really enjoy it. So there you go. I, it really I was, was a my, word of mouth movie. Yeah, yeah. I heard you know from some fans of our show, and uh, I really we picked it as like uh, one of our favorite horror movies that year. Oh, oh cool. yeah, Thank you. I love that. I'm a big fan of it, and I showed my mom's a big fan of it too. Or our mom. Oh. 
She hasn't seen the sequel yet, but I have a feeling actually she'll be a fan of it. All right. When I was a kid, when I was six, she actually took me to the drive-in to go see, like, uh, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All right. Really? Motel Hill. All the classics. <laughs> <laughs> there's no more drive-ins, man. There's, a, there's just a few. Yeah, there's none around here. You guys here. have any around there? Oh, oh, I wish we did. Yeah, I, I met a guy that bought one in Texas the other night. Um, I was at this place called the New Beverly Theaters, which is here in Los Angeles, and um, and a guy was there, and he uh, he bought a drive-in movie theater. I thought that's so cool. Wow. Yeah. There was somebody here that um, they tried to. Uh, do a theater where they would show older movies, uh-huh. and it took them a long time to get all set up. But it it like closed right away because nobody went to nobody went there. It's like a great idea, but it's just I people think you just had to have some bucks that you could just spend and lose. Um, like if you if you if you maybe if you had a successful career <laughs> making movies or something, and you just wanted to do it, and right. you knew you were going to lose money. Um, yeah, kind of a labor of love you, thing. Yeah, you you know do it. I I know that you know, everybody always says that. And, you know, it's not, not not as easily done as said, but um, yeah. but that would be awesome to to someday have a movie theater. I just bought a photo booth, which I always wanted to do, and uh, I just had to get it down here now. But it's from the uh. the forties. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's in Northern California though. <laughs> I can't get it here yet, but uh, but it's like the kind with the rounded ends. Uh-huh. Not, uh-huh. The, not not the square one, and um, uh, it's black and white. Of course, dip and dunk. I've always wanted one, and uh, so I I just finally bought one. I found one. Bought it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to get it here. <laughs> do you have uh, Do you have like a uh, big collection of anything? Like um, do you keep Do you keep a lot of stuff from the movies or anything? Um, not really. You know, like the um, I was gonna say like. Even stuff from the first movie, I've ended up having to recycle in these these movies and kind mm-hmm. of destroy. Um, my house is a complete mess. <laughs> it's uh, it's just you know, it's just it's you know, it's a mess. And now now that I'm doing these movies, uh, Feast Two and Three, uh, where I'm working, this this production house. Is a complete mess, and all I can think is like, well, when Feast Three is over, they're going to want me to take all my stuff back home, you know, because I have <laughs> instruments, I have guitars and keyboards and and uh, you know cameras and dollies and just and crap just everywhere. And uh, right now they they're kind of tolerating it, but you know, it's going to be bad when I have to take it back home. <laughs> I hate moving. You know, right. Stuff. <laughs> well, is there any? Um any like if you ever go to conventions or anything like that, does any like fans or anybody like have their own ideas where like uh, the monsters originated from? That oh well, yeah, like interested I mean, you. But that's okay, you know. Like I, I, I mean, we don't we don't really say. Although you know, Gary Tunnicliffe, who made the first monsters, he had an idea where they came from, and I think we all have an idea where they come from, mm-hmm. and and I and I think there's always that thing of like we should tell but then I, I don't know yeah I blame me I guess I'm always the one that goes you know like well you know no we shouldn't we shouldn't tell because that's that's what they always do you know in, in, in these movies and you know so I don't know All right. I guess that's just the nature of these movies and, yeah. uh, and there, there's, a, there's, there, there's many other movies where you know they, they tell and have backstories and get really specific and you know, and and you know, and uh, maybe this one doesn't. I, do you guys see Cloverfield? Yeah, that's what I was just thinking about because there's no explanation to uh. Well, there is from there. actually. There is an explanation in Cloverfield. Well, there's something that happens in that last, the very last sequence. Did you watch that? Hmm. Did I've it? seen the movie. Well, there's something that happens. I guess because I can say it now because because everybody's yeah well, most everybody's seen it. Probably, and and I thought it was pretty good. I actually didn't go see it right away when it came out. Yeah, I saw it at the theater. Maybe it's a little jealous, uh, but uh, <laughs> but I actually thought it was like one of the better horror movies. <laughs> it certainly it was a monster movie, which was mm-hmm. kind of cool. Yeah, I enjoyed it once the monsters came. Before yeah. that, I was like, man, I hope monsters come and kill all these people. But if you watched the the last piece 
where you know the little video comes back on, you know, of like they're on the they're they're on the carousel, maybe at Coney Island or wherever they are. Yeah. There's something that happens in the back. Oh man, I'm not. I have it on DVD. I'm not to go check. So it. Now you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to watch it. Yeah. Oh, I actually man. think probably the scary scene in that movie is when is uh, when they turn on the lights on the uh, the camera and there's all the little. Uh, the little monsters that are you know, when they're down the tunnel. <laughs> yeah. I love the little critters. The little critters were cool. Yeah, that's actually really. I, I like to. I wanted to like that movie, but I, I just there was something about it. I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, it was such a big movie. It was that they actually made such a big movie um, that that was it was it was in certain ways modern, but in certain ways so old fashioned. You know, like like the Godzilla movies and stuff, and right. just, but they that they actually kind of went for it somehow um you know with these huge giant effects and you know buildings and you know falling over and so i don't know <laughs> i was i was just kind of surprised you know like the host i like the host also i love the host, the host was the, awesome i love that movie you know yeah. and i i love that the the whole family aspect of it you know with the uh they're just you know just nothing went right and and the, yep. the and the goofy. Oh, the characters were so great. Trying yeah. to hold yeah. things together, and and you know when they would all be crying, <laughs> just pretty good. Yeah, you know. So yeah, we, we got to see a well, lot. I probably shouldn't say this on the show. I was gonna say okay. we got to. I was. We probably shouldn't talk about this kind of stuff, but we got to see that movie uh, before it was released over here. Uh, one oh, of really? Our, one of our fans uh, hooked us up. I was oh. sure to buy the DVD when it came out. Yeah. yeah. We do not condone such behavior. <laughs> um, is, is there any lines from uh, Feast Two or Feast, uh, the original Feast, that like people really like uh, remember that you like didn't really think about while you were writing it or directing it? Oh gosh, now now you're gonna put me on the spot again. Um, I don't know. We're, we're, I, I will say this: that you know, when you make a few movies like this, you're always saying lines from the movie. Like, you don't mean to. But you'll say a line that kind of reminds you of a line that's in the film because you've heard it so many times, and you'll just go right into that that line, you know. Uh, but there, there's it just that happens just like every day you know, right. with all of us since we were all in it, you know, like Diane and my dad and my brother, and then Marcus and Patrick. Uh, there's you know just and then you know we're making Feast Three, so so it's all the same people like all around us, and we'll just. We'll just end up reeling off lines, you know, from the movie just by accident. We don't mean to. Once they get fingered, you know. She will. <laughs> <laughs> I actually heard someone say that the other day from the film, and it, like, really shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say who. Right, right. But it was pretty, pretty. Yeah, you sure it was from the film, or they were just... <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they, well, they were referencing, referencing the film, but it, oh, was, okay. it was just... Uh, you know, I, don't know, I can't say who it was. It was just like, whoa. <laughs> Someone you wouldn't expect. Right. But, um, of course, then my dad, you know, he's totally profane and uh, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't you know, like, don't touch the dick and so on. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And he yeah. seems like a real big fan while he's watching on the commentary. He just starts yeah. laughing. He's like, oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah, he was just watching the movie. He was sitting there and... Uh, um, what what was really funny is that that <laughs> I got mad about something, so I I stopped talking halfway through the commentary. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if you noticed that or not. There is a part that Patrick, yeah, the, it just goes it quiet. It's black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I haven't really listened to it to see what <laughs> see what they did because right. it was, was kind of I probably should have done that, but you know, hey, you know these mm-hmm. these, these films they all mean a lot to us, you know. <laughs> And it just comes out weird sometimes. Right. Uh, I take it uh, your nephew hasn't seen his performance yet? Not yet. Mm-hmm. But uh, someday, we, we always postulate what it'll be like when he watches it. You know, like, <laughs> like cool or wow or you're like, oh, no. Or, you know. <laughs> no wonder I'm in therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're showbiz people. You know, that's what we do. You know, yeah. if we were... If we were trapeze, you know, eventually he would be up on the trapeze, and uh, that's what uh, that's what we do, you know. Yeah. Well, I want to. We thank don't look you. at it like it's a bad thing or to kill your <laughs> nephew. <or something. laughs> 
<laughs> now that's a great quote right there. I think so. We'll put that right up on the website. Yes. <laughs> well, tell everybody to go uh, get Feast 2 Sloppy Seconds, get the unrated, or you can only find the rated. You get the, or get them both. Yeah, you know, I mean, I would say actually you're pretty safe with either one. But, you know, you always like the one that has more stuff in it. Now, it might just be boring, everyone. But, uh, but yeah, I like the unrated one. It's, it's, it's a little longer and has a couple more things in it. But, uh, you know, I'd say we pretty much got away with murder. Yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot of good uh, releases lately from Dimension Extreme, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> and I have nothing to say after that. I, I can't <laughs> They're definitely a... So if you see that on a movie... Oh, well, you got, like, the Wizard of Gore remakes, good stuff, Diary of the Dead. No, oh, I have it here. I haven't looked at it yet. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Crispin Glover. Well, yeah, he lives up the street from me, but I don't know him. Yeah. And um, one day, we were at the, he, I saw him at a, at a local little Mexican restaurant. I had a couple of margaritas, and I went, Hey, man! <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like the typical, like, stupid, you know, fan drunk dude. Yeah. And, and then I was, he turned around, I was like, kind of shocked that he turned around, and I was like, uh, our dads know each other, okay, I'll see ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. His performance as Montag is just it's yeah. phenomenal. Just uh, his delivery of lines. <laughs> well, now, what about the gore in that one? What do they do? What kind of stuff? I mean, because, you know, the original is just so... It's so bizarre, but yeah, it's it's so insane. bizarre, but and it's so like, like, you, you, you know, kind of like. Well, okay, so we were talking about the the neat special effects in Cloverfield, or <laughs> like, you know, if you're gonna go like that digital thing and whatnot, and then then you, if you wanted to find that that uh, opposite film, you know, <laughs> you'd probably go to something like The Wizard of Gore, you know, and, right. and uh, where how did well, I mean, I'll say it in a minute, but how, how did you think? What did how did they approach it in this one? Did they Keep it there. Did they? There's a lot. There's a lot of gore. Yeah, it's a it's a lot uh, cleaner, a lot spiffier. Yeah, a lot of digital effects. Um, yeah, it's not like hokey like the, like the first one. <laughs> I, but, I uh, saw that. I watched Chris that with, with, a, with a completely full theater too. <laughs> when I was, at the time, it was pretty wild. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm a big fan. And uh, Crispin Glover has a co- big cod piece, which is very uh-huh. interesting. <laughs> I, I seem to always notice uh, it's all the movies I watch. And that's kind of like where you guys are. <laughs> right? well, it's, it's legal here, and we're in Massachusetts. Yeah, the Cape Cape Cod, <laughs> thereabouts. Uh, have you been to Cape Cod? Yes, I have. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, well, I used to live in New York, and 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 you know, but I'd never been to Cape Cod, and and I'm one of those guys that just quite didn't get it. So Diane and I went to Cape Cod. We thought we were going to actually go to a little fishing village. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, you know, New York North. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so we lived in the in the village and it was just like, we saw everybody from down there and, and, uh, and actually went to the, the, you know, the movie theater that's there and, and saw, uh, seven beauties and swept away double bill. So it was like, you know the art house. Uh, you know uh, what? What is the what is the, the the main city up there? Uh, you mean are you talking about Province Town? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the little, yeah, I, I live in a there. completely different area. I live in a I live in Sandwich, and actually we didn't have a movie theater until a <laughs> few years ago, and they never showed an R-rated movie until yeah. Jackass Two. I guess they were like <laughs> this fine. Well, there film. you go. If you're gonna go, you might. As <laughs> we we well have to show. Well, Mar- Marcus, uh, the writer, one of the writers, um, used to be a projectionist in his small town, um, and uh, in, uh, in Illinois, I guess. And um, but uh, it's just it's just a very very small town, and he but he was the uh, the, the the projectionist at the movie theater, and now uh, everybody's renting his his DVD, and they he actually showed the movie um, Feast, you know, at his theater where yeah. he worked. When it came out, that's pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I like that. Actually, where I live, there's no, there's no uh, McDonald's, there's no um, fast food. Really? Was yeah. well, it? Is it like a, one of the areas that we would have gone by on the train? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the train goes through here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
because actually that was, it turned out to be a pretty fun uh, little trip. At first, I, uh, you know, we're, you know, we were in the midst of fighting, so, so, um, <laughs> so we had to fight for a couple of days, and then, then it was a great time. And I never had a lobster before. Oh, and, really? And uh, it was a while back, and 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 I have to say, it was pretty, uh, pretty good. That's good and, stuff. You can walk. But I've never had. I've never had one like that since then. Uh, uh, you know, just they just, spoil you. Just there, yeah. Uh huh. It was just pretty. Amazing. You could basically walk around Cape Cod and like shake a tree, and lobsters will fall out. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of scary. That's my next film. <laughs> uh, I better keep quiet. Everybody's still in my good ideas. Oh, lobsters man. falling from trees. <laughs> A couple of years ago, I said on the show, I said, I don't want to see a slasher movie. I want to see a smasher film with a guy killing people with, like, a giant uh, meat tenderizer. And then, uh-huh. I, and then I watch uh, The Meat Train, and here's a guy with a meat tenderizer. Yeah. Oh, oh, have you seen that yet? Yeah, I did. And? Um, because I, I haven't seen it. Um, I don't th- I'm, I enjoy it, but uh, it seems like a big part of the middle is just kind of like they're just kind of walking around. Yeah, seems like it's a good idea. And then I didn't know this until I think the other week. Someone told me that, like the story is like a fifteen-page short story, and yeah. it really makes sense because like it starts out good and like the end's kind of cool. But like there's a just seems like they didn't know what to do like in the middle Cause, of the. Because it made for a good trailer, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it makes wow. right. <laughs> well, anyway, it's gonna play here in a movie theater uh, for like two nights, so I'm gonna try to get in to see it, mm-hmm. and uh, if I'm not. If I'm not working, it's and, nothing uh, worth seeing. Yeah, it's better than uh, you know a lot of movies that are out there. So don't tell me the ending. I won't tell you. Even though I I blab too much about our movie. <laughs> yeah, we we, we totally spoiled the movie, way, but still go on and buy it. But still, it's a if you're in the spirit of things, you know, it's like watching the Evil Dead. You know, um, um, really, Evil Dead one, you know, the first one. <laughs> kind of as Wizard of Gore, it, it probably isn't really made very well, you know, and and that a lot of stuff is probably pretty awful. But if you're in the spirit of it, you know, like the yeah. the roller coaster part of it, 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 it's pretty, it's a pretty fun ride, you know. And that adds but, uh, to the movie. That's why I can never understood why I know they're talking about remaking it, and I think it would just like take away everything that's like fun about the movie. Well, you know, you can't go home again, so it's, they can't they can't make that movie again. Mm-hmm. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they where they go. You know, hopefully it won't just be like you know generic, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know. Uh, I I recommend Wizard of Gore. So, so a, a lot of it's good, but uh, just the Christopher Christopher uh, what's his name? <laughs> Montag. We'll just say Montag. It's just <laughs> tremendous. I do some lines, but I couldn't do I couldn't do the man justice. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just wanted to bring up about the uh, Midnight Meat Train. Uh, I don't want to spoil the ending, but there's actually some monsters at the end of it, and I thought they looked very similar to the monsters in Feast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lawsuit. No. <laughs> just took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> no, that's, that's okay. Well, you know, you know, monsters are kind of, you know, every now and then something will be different, but a lot of times it's just stuff that, you know, scared you maybe when you were younger, you know, like, ah, the teeth, or, you know. Because, right. <laughs> you know, like, our monster's kind of chunky, and, and I know that my friend Kirk here, who's editing Feast 3, uh, you know, likes, like, the skinny monsters, you know, like, to him, those are scary, you know, like the, the, the spindly monsters. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, it's always, uh, you know, but that's, you know, each movie has a different, you know, type, body type monster. Was- Whatever. Did you design like uh, was like the the look of the monster? Was that your idea? No, it's mo- it's mostly you know you, you sort of you you say certain things, but then uh, Gary Gary Chinacliff, I don't know if you know him. Uh, um, he's a, he's a uh, like you know he did a lot of Hellraiser movies and just all kinds of stuff. He's he's pretty great. Um, he's a crazy Englishman. Um, he uh, he did it. He made the monster and designed it and. Uh, and also, yeah, and then and then uh, one of the people that works for him, Mike Reagan, was basically the main monster in the suit. And it was the monster in Feast 1 and the main monster in Feast 2. Uh, but it's really funny because when you, when you see the the monsters um, running around or walking around or whatever they're doing, you can actually tell who's inside the different suits. 
just from the, from their body language, right. even though mm-hmm. even though they're monsters, it's pretty it's pretty yeah. funny. Oh, there's there's Mike the monster. Oh, there's Tim the monster. Oh, there's there's Vance the monster. <laughs> you know. Did did you want them to all act a little differently? So like it did seem like they were different. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Make yourself seem smart and they, say, "Yeah, I told." I think they just acted like monsters. <laughs> you know, and monsters are grumpy, by the way. They are. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you see a monster, don't go up and talk to it. He's, he's in a bad mood. That, that's the way it goes. Yeah, they don't like to wait around. Uh huh. But partly because I guess those suits get kind of hot. Right. And uh, and they they can't run very far, and uh, and they have big junk. So uh, there we go. <laughs> right. That they trip on everything. So it's not as glamorous as you would think being a monster. But... I guess not. But uh, but not everybody can do it. So there you go. Mm-hmm. And 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 we say like, well, you know, how many jobs can you you know blow blow junk up and you know have naked girls and monsters running around you know so. Exactly. Uh, I think if you know if you're ever thinking of something to uh, maybe put up on eBay or if you're at one of the conventions, I think uh, like a signed monster schlong would. I think yes, monster junk with right, with, monster junk with, see if with huevos. Home <laughs> <Cold> huevos. <laughs> Excellent. Well, in the next one, we actually have a monster uh, jump over the camera, and his well, his huevos hit the lens and knocks the camera up into position to see something else that we need to see in the scene. So, uh. <laughs> you know, can imagine me like having to explain that to everyone. Uh, but we actually do it. I don't know. I don't know how, if anyone will actually even realize that that's what it is, but uh, there's actually a little sound like boom. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see any of that in Cloverfield. Yeah, no. That guy should have been knocking over buildings with his. His big <laughs> Well, we want to thank you for coming on. All right, all right, you guys. You're good. Well, well, look, when I, <laughs> next time I'm in Cape Cod, I'll uh, if I'm on the train, I'll, I'll wave to you, and, and, and otherwise I'll uh, stop by and say hello. All right, they'll well, they'll show you where the good lobster trees are. When they're nice yeah, right. we'll go shake some. Yeah, we'll, yep. we'll go shake some down. Are they cooked? No, you got to cook them yourself, but. Seriously, right now you can get them for like five bucks a pound. It's like the cheap. They're crazy thing. cheap right yeah. now. Yep. <laughs> now you know when I was growing up, you know, it's in the seventies. That's, that's my age range. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but you know, I was in California, so it may not be the same where you are. But they were they were doing a, uh, all these commercials about nuclear power mm-hmm. uh-huh. and how safe it was, and it had this this scuba guy coming out of the water, a snorkeling dude. Um, holding a couple of lobsters, and you know, kind of as you know, nature and this kind of, but they they were all red, mm-hmm. and um, they were all they were like cooked, right? Uh, but they didn't really realize that, I guess, you know, like because right, because they they turn red when you cook them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre cooked lobsters, that's pretty yeah. sweet. Well, we gotta but, get some nuclear power here. But he was just he was talking to the camera and everything. Anyway, we just always thought that was pretty wild. <laughs> that's but, awesome. Uh, but then I didn't actually have a lobster till years later when I came to your neck of the woods. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, all right. I was going to ask Troy, right. Troy where he'd write, where would you recommend uh, John would get a lobster? <laughs> um, the the lobster pot in Buzzards Bay is the way to go. Yeah, I would have said Shaw's, but Shaw's closed, which is very sad. Yeah. Or they, Captain Scott's and Sandwich. That's a good yeah. place. They closed down this this like uh, historic seafood place that had a big tugboat and uh-huh. people would go and get their picture taken. They closed it and they put up a CVS and a Dunkin' Donuts. Nice. <laughs> oh, well. Sign of the apocalypse right there. <laughs> I think I see another movie. Yeah. Okay. Right. And from Every that thing. Dunkin' Donuts, you can, three, you can see like two other Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. That's true. Well, the rotary over here, we have four Dunkin' Donuts that you can go to at any point in the rotary. It's very strange. Insanity. <laughs> All right, we've kept, we've kept him along here long enough. That's All true. Right. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to go see Midnight Meat Train, and maybe I will call you back and let you know what I think. But anyways, uh, or, or not, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I'll be thinking of you guys. There. Excellent. How's that? Could you do us and, one uh, favor thanks. before you go? Huh? Can you do us one favor before you go? What's that? Uh, could you say this is John Gulliger, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com? Okay. Well, you ready? Yeah. I don't know how, how great this is going to sound, you know, but this is John Gulliger, and you're listening to 
WithoutYourHead.com. Excellent. That was perfect. And what were you saying before I interrupted you? I have no idea. All right. <laughs> we rambled a lot on this show today. Yeah. But I'm going to go shoot some more monsters tomorrow. And uh, and hopefully uh, um, want to wave to you if you go see Feast 3. So. <laughs> Oh, It'll right. be the without your head wave. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> by the way, it's not up on the site yet, but Troy did draw your caricature. We do caricatures of all the guests. Oh, and, really? uh, yeah, I'll email that to you when I have it up on the site. It's going to look like a telephone? It is. It's just, it's just a telephone. <laughs> it is. I have right, to guys. search long and hard to find a picture of you. Exactly. Well, now I'm going to go out. I'm not going to find a laughter, but I'm going to go out and find a donut now. You guys made me want a donut. So oh, man. There you oh, go. there you go. <laughs> all right, well, yeah. thanks a lot. All right. All right Thanks, man. Great. Bye. See ya. This is Kyle Gass of Tenacious D. You're listening to Without Your Head.